All right, so this video will talk about the bakery's algorithm, which is used for synchronization of critical section access among multiple processes. The algorithm was invented by Leslie Lamport, and essentially the aspect of the bakery's algorithm is is the inspiration from bakeries or pizzerias. So before we get into the bake algorithm, it is important for us to understand several technical terms. In computer science, it is common for multiple threads to simultaneously access the same resources. Data corruption can occur if two or more threads try to write into the same memory location, or if one thread reads a memory location before another has finished writing into it. An import's bakery algorithm is one of many mutual exclusion algorithms designed to prevent concurrent threads entering critical sections of code concurrently to eliminate the risk of data corruption. Data corruption refers to areas in computer data that occur during writing, reading, storaging, transmissioning, or processing that introduces unintended changes to the original data. Data corruption really affects the memory where memory is referred as a device that is used to store information for immediate use in a computer or related in any other computer hardware devices. To protect the memory from data corruption, uh, we must use uh, the mutual exclusion, where mutual exclusion is requirement that one thread of, of execution never enters its critical section at the same time that another concurrent thread of execution enters its own critical section, which refers to an interval of time during which a thread of execution accesses a shared resource. And the critical section will be shown in in the unlock code, in the pseudocode that Evan will be showing you later. Essentially, when we enter the bakery, we are given a particular ticket with a specified number. Now, after we have received our ticket, we would need to wait for some time until the ticket number is called. Once the ticket number is displayed throughout the process, then we would be able to get our food or whatever we are uh, trying to do. When, uh, when we look at this from a synchronization aspect, we see that we are trying to synchronize the usage of a particular counter. So all people who have a ticket should wait until the number is called. Then each person, depending on, on when the number is called, goes into the counter and is able to collect whatever they want. For instance, they can collect the food and then be able to eat it. Now we will see how the bakery algorithm is used to solve the critical section problem where, where there are end processes involved and all of these end processes access the same critical section. We will now see how the baker's algorithm relates to the analogy of the bakery. It is helpful in these certain situations where multiple threads need to access the same data to make sure that all of the threads do not access the same shared data at the same time. If these threads all access the same shared data at the same time, it could cause problems and even overwrite or corrupt the data, making it unusable. The bakery algorithm is one of many algorithms used to make sure that threads don't access it all at one time so that way they don't corrupt or override the data. The first step is waiting for these threads to enter into the program. Once they enter into the program, they will then wait their turn to get a ticket. First enters A into the program, then C, and then B. The threads will then wait to get their tickets and wait their turn to access the data. First B gets its ticket, then A, then C. C got the lowest number ticket, so it will access the data first, followed by A, and then B. Now that this process is over, it fully ensured that they did not access the data at the same time, and instead waited their turn, so that way the data is not corrupted or overwritten. All right, and then looking at some pseudocode compared to the analogy for the bakery algorithm, we see that we're looking at the lock function and the unlock function. And from there, we see the num i array, and that is set equal to the max, which is num0, num1, all the way to n minus 1 plus 1. So we can think of this easier as more of a doorway into the bakery shop from the analogy of how the customers will come in take their spot in line, or if they don't want to wait in line, they can take their ticket number and just wait in line. And from that, we can see P1, P2, P3, etc. Those numbers 
those are the people in this scenario. So for P equals zero, that for loop, that's what we're looking at. And those are all being funneled into the while loop. And so num P cannot equal zero. That's basically saying that someone has to have a ticket to get their action processed. So they can't equal zero and the num P cannot be greater than num I, which is saying that you have to go in order from least to greatest because that's how the bakery algorithm works. So then we go down to the unlock I function. And from here we see that num I is equal to zero. This happens after one thread or P1, P2, etc., has been executed. They basically lose their spot in line and have to get back in line to get a process reran again, which is why the unlock function sets it to zero. Now what happens if two numbers have the exact same number? So let's say P2 and P3 both have number two. They'll go through the for loop, but once they get to the while loop, they'll execute down to unlock. And once they get down to unlock, the system will crash and it will not work. So that's why it's crucial that every P will have its own spot in line. So two people cannot have the same ticket or two people cannot be in the same spot in line to get their thread executed at the same time because only one can do it at one time.